Who would be the champions of a 165 and 175 pound division inside the UFC? We saw a lot of rumors a few months ago when we didn't know what the UFC 300 main event was going to be about a 165 division and Connor against Michael Chandler headlining in a title fight. As we're coming up to UFC 300, as we kind of, you know, got Hamza Chamaya fight news, out what a 165 and 175 pound divisions would look like. Because Hamza, that's one of the first names that comes to your mind when you think about those divisions. But before we get into it, make sure to like, sub, all that YouTube channel. It really, really does help me out a ton. I appreciate all the love recently, all the subs recently. We're still at 90% unsubscribe, so shit, if you like, if you're liking the video, sub. But let's get right into it. We're going to start off with the 165 pound division. Obviously, this is all hypothetical, and you're kind of looking at it like, how would this guy do against this guy? How would this guy, would he be able to make the cut? Would he go up to 175 or 165? So I don't have people in two divisions. You're either 165 for me or 175. So if you see someone at 165, you're like, oh, why is he not at 175 or vice versa? That is why. They're only in one of the two divisions when obviously there's a few guys on this list that could easily go in between both and possibly be double champs in between both. The first guy that we're going to start off with is a guy that lost the title fight last year at the end of last year. It's Colby Covington. Colby Covington, I feel like when 165 has been floated around, is always a name that comes up towards the top of the division. And people are going to say, oh, Colby Covington's washed now. Look, he lost to Leon. He hasn't been a rank on the roster. And I don't entirely disagree. But I think that it's difficult for a guy like Colby to get super motivated for fights anymore. When, you know, you've lost to Kamara Uzma, and going into that Leon Edwards fight, you lost Leon Edwards. I think now we could see a downturn in Colby and he's perfect for this 165 pound division. He is quite literally perfect for the division. He fights at his natural walk around weight, or at least he says he does. When you see him inside the octagon and see him outside the octagon, it's not that crazy to think that he fights at his natural weight. So he would, you know, have that advantage. He'd be a little bit bigger as a 165er. He, you know, wouldn't have to go up against guys like maybe a Hamza Chamaev at 170 that, you know, are huge for that weight class and some other big, big guys that are at 170. So I think Colby Covington would do really, really well there. The guy after this we have to talk about is a guy who I'm probably picking to be the champion of 165. If you gave me anybody to bet my money on right now to be champ of 165, it would be this guy. It's a pound for pound number one Islam Makachev. Obviously, this would shake things up at 155 as well. So we'd have to look at, you know, who would be the champ of 155. It really shakes up about four different divisions. But I'm only going into 165 and 175 for right now. But I think Islam would move up to 165. He's talked about, you know, moving up to fight Leon Edwards at 170. He's, he's talked about trying to do the things that Khabib never did. Even if he doesn't phrase it like that, you know, trying to get ahead of Khabib in that conversation because Khabib never did become a double champ. And I think this is a division like Colby and that suits him pretty much perfectly. Those Dagestanis, they cut so much weight to get down to 155 and then they'll rehydrate all the way. We've seen those guys walking in at like 185, 190. We know that they're huge. So I think Islam Akatsev having to, you know, cut a little less weight, being a little bit fresher, I think that that would do my world of good. And the only time we've ever seen him lose was when he just got KO'd. And you have to think that has something to do with the weight cut as well. That has something to do with cutting to 155. The only slight thing that could be a problem for Islam Makachev here is there is guys that I'll talk about here that are big 170s, yeah, that I think can cut down the extra five pounds. There's some guys where you're like, there's just no way he's making 165. But there is guys at 170 that can make 165. And Islam Makachev would not weigh more than them. He would not be bigger than them. So I think that he's probably tied for the 165 pound, you know, champion who I think would be the champ with another guy who I'll bring up later who is currently at the 170 pound division. But Islam Makachev, he wouldn't have to cut as much weight. He would be fresher. We've seen some issues with his cardio against Volkanovski. We saw him gas out a little bit. That would help that again, 100%, having the ability to, you know, be that little bit more fresh. After that, we have one of the 170s, that, you know, I think could cause Islam Makachev a bit of problems. He's not the guy that I think will really, really beat him, but he's the guy that I think could cause Islam Makachev a lot of problems with that 165 pound division. It's Gilbert Burns. When we've looked at Gilbert in his last few losses, you kind of see him lose to JDM, you see him lose to Hamza Chemaev. You've seen him lose to a lot of big, big 170s. You know, JDM walks around at what, about 189, 190, which isn't huge for a 170, but he's not cutting down to 165. He's not making that cut. So I think that Gilbert Burns at 165 could cause problems for 155ers that are coming up because Gilbert's still big. And with the skill set that he has, with the problems that he can still cause to guys like JDM, who was beaten until like the last minute till he got knocked out, like Hamza Chemaev, where some people still argue that he won that fight. I think that he could cause a lot of problems to these smaller guys, like an Islam Akachev, like a Charles Oliveira, who, you know, they're not, obviously they're not small, but they're smaller compared to Gilbert Burns, who's been fighting 170s. 
And Gilbert's jiu-jitsu is something that, you know, we kind of look at Charles Oliveira and say, wow, he's got phenomenal jiu-jitsu. So does Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is another guy in the UFC. Him and Charles, two of the very best. So I think that Gilbert against Islam Akachev, if that's who you're picking to be a 165-pound champion, I think Gilbert and Islam is pretty close on the feet. I don't think that there's like a huge gap either way. You can argue Gilbert's had better performances on the feet. You can argue Islam Akachev knocking out Volkanovski proves that he's better on the feet. But the thing is, in the ground game, I think that's where things get most interesting. Gilbert's jiu-jitsu against Islam Akachev's wrestling and his submission wrestling. And I know you're probably going to say to yourself, well, listen, like he's just going to he's just going to get him out of there. Islam Akachev's going to be able to wrestle fuck him and Islam Akachev's going to be able to submit him. Hamza couldn't. Hamza couldn't submit him. And Hamza's a huge guy for 170. He's at 185 now because he couldn't make 170. And he, one, didn't want to go into Gilbert Burns' guard. He just didn't want to go in there. And two, couldn't submit him when he submits pretty much everybody. So I think it would be a very, very interesting matchup at 165. I think a lot more interesting than people give it credit for. After that, we have Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, another 155er that I think, you know, he's big for that 155 class. I saw a video about nine years ago where Justin Gaethje was saying, uh, oh, I only stay about 10 pounds above 155. And I was thinking to myself, okay, well, maybe I won't put him in here. But if you look at Justin Gaethje against Fiziev and against Dustin Poirier, there's not a hope in hell that that fucking guy is 165 walking around. He looked huge for those fights. Definitely cutting a lot of weight. I'd say he walks around at maybe 180. Like he is jacked for those fights. When you see how big he looks compared to a Dustin Poirier, when you see how big he looks compared to a Fiziev, Fiziev's not a small guy either. Fiziev is a guy who was talking about the 165 pound division. When the rumors were out about it, he was saying, oh yeah, it's real. It's going to happen. And if you look at Justin Gaethje compared to Fiziev, Fiziev, a guy who wanted to go up to 165, it would be a long day for Fiziev considering how big Justin Gaethje is. But Justin Gaethje, definitely a guy at 165. You'd look at him as a contender. I'm not sure if he's the guy that profits the most out of a 165 pound division. I think at 155, it does help him that he's big. And we already know he's got a fucking granite chin anyway. So you can't say chin. His cardio's always looked really good. No matter who he goes up against, he's had five round bangers. He's had three round wars. So I think that 165, it doesn't hurt him and it doesn't help him a bunch. But you have to mention his name when we talk about 165. After that, we have... Conor McGregor. I had to bring him up. There's just no way I couldn't bring him up. He was the guy that was meant to fight against Michael Chandler when all the rumors came out. I can't even remember if this started from like Twitter rumors and it was just some random guy put out the idea and everyone was like, oh, that would be sick. Or if it was like actually credible rumors from a big MMA source. I can't remember it. But Conor at 165, him against Michael Chandler would be a banger. And it's kind of at that nice weight class for Conor because Conor's too small for 170s. We've seen him We've seen him be too small for 170s. If you think it, who's at 170 now? Leon, you could say that it's a decent matchup for Conor, but I think Leon's a bit too big. He's 6'2". He's a big guy. Look at Shavkat. Shavkat's a big guy for 170. Look at Bilal. Bilal's a big, big, big 170. Hamza Chamaev, all these guys. I think that Conor's just a little bit too small for 170. And he might even be a little bit too small for 155 if you're talking about Islam Makashev, Charles Oliveira. But I think that 165 is that perfect place for him because he doesn't want to cut weight anymore. He doesn't want to go down to 145 and drain himself completely, which if I was as rich as Connor, I completely understand I'm not doing it. But at 165, I think he could give some very difficult matchups to some very good guys. A Justin Gaethje fight at 165, oof, take my money. A Dustin Poirier fight at 165, Dustin, someone who I think is a little bit too small for 165, so I didn't bring him in in this conversation considering that he said he walks around at like 172 outside of camp. I didn't think that, you know, 165 is his division. I think he could probably dominate 155 if all of these guys move up. But Connor against an Ian Gary at 165, Connor against a Charles Oliveira at 165, yeah, we could have some we could have some banger banger fights. After that is a guy I did mention, Shavkat. Shavkat is the guy that I think could rival Islam Makachev at 165. He is phenomenal. The guy is unbelievable. And he's not huge for 170. When you look at the big time 170s, okay, you've got guys that are, you know, like 6'3, 6'4 at 170. You've got guys that look jack. But when you look at walk around wait for Shavkat, he walks around at about 185, 187 from what I could find. It's difficult as fuck to find people's walk around weights just because they don't really say it all that much. But from what I could find about Shafka, he walks around 185, 187. And the guy is a monster. And he's not huge either. He's one of the ones that 100% could jump between 165, 175. Because in this hypothetical, we're axing out 170. We're getting rid of 170. But I think between 165, 175, Shavkat could for sure become a double champion. And how do I think he would look at 165? Against, like, comparing against all of these guys. Oh my God, would there be some fun matchups. Shavkat Islam Akachev. Oh my God, banger. Shavkat Justin Gaethje. Shavkat Charles Oliveira. Oh, 
There would be some phenomenal fights in here. When you get Shavkat stand up against Islam Makachev's wrestling, you know what I mean? They're both super, super well-rounded guys. And I think Shavkat can deal with that size. I think he can deal with the size of a guy like Islam Makachev. And to think about the hypothetical matchups, when you have Shavkat Rachmanov, who finishes every fight, against Charles Oliveira, who also finishes every fight, that would probably be one of my favorite fights ever in UFC history. The only difficult thing about that fight would be choosing, you know, who do I want to root for? Do I just want to be a neutral? Like, who am I betting on in that fight? It would be so, so, so fun to watch. So I think that Shavkat at 165 in this 165 pound division creates unlimited fun matchups. And I think he's a real test for Islam Makachev. A real big time test for Islam Makachev. If Islam can beat Shavkat, become a double champ, we seriously need to start looking at where he places among that kind of goat pyramid. Is he in tier two? Is he in tier three? He's not tier one. But tier two, tier three, tier four, it'll be interesting to see where the general consensus is on him placed. And then finally at 165, we have another Irishman. We had two in this tier. It's Ian Gary. And I know you're probably going to think to yourself, Ian Gary's too big. He's too big for 165. But in everything I could find, in everything I could find, he said it himself on Errol Helwani's show, that he walks around at about 190. I don't think that that's crazy to have him cut to 165. We've seen fighters cut a lot more than 25 pence to get down there. If you look at middleweight, and I was trying to find walk around weights, You've got an absolute crazy amount of people like Paolo Costa said he walks around 230. Alex Pereira obviously you say he walks around like 229, 230. Like those guys are cutting 35, 40 pounds to make that. I don't think a 25 pound weight cut is crazy. If you think about it, it's Islam Makachev cutting to 155 essentially, probably a little bit more. Islam probably cuts about 35 to get to 155. So I think that, you know, Ian Gary cutting 25 is not plausible and he would be a big 165-er. Who he'd be big like three, four inch height advantage on Islam Akachev, maybe even five inch height advantage on Islam Akachev. He'd look bigger than anybody else in that division. I know he's not the most favorable MMA character right now, but you can't deny seeing him amongst that 165 pound division would be ultra, ultra fun. That's the 165 pound division. Let me know who you guys think will be the champ of that division. Now we're on to the 175. You thought that division was good. Now we're on to 175. And let me tell you, we have some absolute banger names at 175. Starting off, I feel like this division is custom made for Hamza Chemaev to be a champion. Just because, you know, he struggles to make 170. We've seen him miss weight by five, six, seven pounds at 170. He still possibly could make it. You know, they offered him a title shot against Leon Edwards at 170. So he still possibly could make it. But him at 185, I'm not ultra confident in him against Robert Whitaker. Everybody and their dad has done, a, you know, a fight night predictions on how this is the greatest UFC fight night ever. So I'm not going to do it, but I will go into that fight really quickly for two minutes. Hamza Chemaev, Robert Whitaker. The first thing I saw is Hamza Chemaev is a favorite. I didn't know about that. Bobby Knuckles looked really, really good against Paolo Costa. I think that him, I think that Hamza Chemaev being a favorite is a dangerous game because Robert Whitaker is another guy that's a big 185er. He's not a small 185er that Hamza Chemaev is going to be able to bully. Also, Robert Whitaker, decent takedown defense. And he's not bad on the ground in terms of Jiu Jitsu. He doesn't, he doesn't compare to Hamza Chemaev, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't have bad Jiu Jitsu. He doesn't have bad wrestling. And on the feet, he will give Hamza Chemaev problems. And the thing is, if it's a fight night main event, it's five rounds. It's five rounds. So if Hamza Chemaev, when we've looked at him against Usman, against Gilbert, he doesn't have three round cardio. If Robert Whitaker can make it out of that first round, that second round, you've got to start to look at it and say, Robert Whitaker could get a finish laid on. He could 100% get a finish laid on. It's a super interesting fight stylistically. It's going to be one of the greatest fight nights ever. I could make a video on it if people want to, but I'll probably just talk about it in a live stream. I'll probably give my in-depth thoughts on the fight night in a live stream. But what can I say? Dana White watched my video about how the UFC's fallen off and instantly went, bang, we're hitting you with a god tier fight night. That's what we're doing. And we're bringing out some more banger fights because UFC has announced some bangers in the past days. But Hamza Chimarev at 175, how do I think he would do? It's a tailor-made division for him. It's perfect for him. Kamek 185, just because some of those guys are too big for him. I think Drikas, Izzy, a lot of those guys are too big for Hamza Chamaev. He just doesn't have that 185 frame yet. He could bulk up to it, but I don't think that he has it yet. 170, he can't make 170. It drains him too much. The weight cut is just too bad for him. But 175, that's the sweet spot for Hamza. Where he doesn't have to cut a shitload of weight, you know what I mean? He's not going to struggle to make the weight, I don't think. And he's got some good matchups here. He's got a lot of the 170s here that are going up five pounds, which probably hurts them, and it helps Hamza Chamaev. And the 185ers that are cutting down, I think it's difficult for those 185ers. They might be a little bit more drained. So Hamza Chamaev at 175, oof, monster at 175. After that, we have another guy that's in contention for the 170 pound title. 
A guy who I don't think's cutting down to 165 anytime soon is Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad, you know, people try ragdoll him a lot. People try, you know, take the piss out of him a lot, saying that, you know, he doesn't have fun fights. And I can't argue that he doesn't bring some of it on himself. Doesn't have the most fun fighting style. You know, doesn't really get himself any fans. Most of the stuff that he puts out, you kind of look at it and you're like, Bilal, that's just kind of cringe. But I do think that he does get a little bit too much hate. When I think him against Hamza at 175 would be a fun matchup. Bilal Muhammad's grappling against Hamza Chamayev's grappling. I think Hamza comes out as the winner in that fight. But I think that that would be a close, close fight, a lot closer than most people think. Just because, you know, Bilal Muhammad, people kind of get their opinion swayed a little bit by how much people dislike him. But I think Bilal Muhammad is a serious, serious contender if there's a 175 pound division. We've seen him at 170 be a contender, be a guy who some people are picking to beat Leon Edwards. I think that Leon would beat him at 170, but a lot of people are picking him to beat him. I think he could possibly fraud check Hamza Chamayev at 175, but I guess we'll have to see if the UFC make the division. After that, we have our first 185er. It's Bo Nickel. When we're talking about, okay, guys that could fraud check Hamza Chamayev, in terms of the wrestling, the things I would do to watch a Bo Nickel Hamza Chamayev fight, Oh my God, it would be a bang. It would be Europe versus the US. You've obviously got Hamza Chamayev's elite kind of like European wrestling where he's not an NCAA blue chip type guy like Bo Nickel, but he can still take anybody down. Took Maru Usman down with ease. So I'd love to watch that. I'd even watch it as a wrestling match. Just Hamza Chamayev against Bo Nickel, just both of those guys going at it. You know what I mean? Bo Nickel would obviously win a wrestling match. But then when we incorporate the striking, Bo Nickel doesn't have crazy, crazy striking. We have seen him knock out some guys. But he ain't knocking out Hamza Chamayev, you know what I mean? He's not knocking out these elite of the elite top level UFC prodigy, UFC, you know, future champion type guys. That's not who he's knocking out right now. So I think a Bo Nickel Hamza Chamayev fight would be so, so, so much fun. Another guy that I kind of think is in limbo between that like 170, 185 pound division that this is perfect for, former champion Kamar Usman. Kamar Usman, if he's still got some juice left in the knees, you know what I mean? If his knees aren't withering as we speak. I think that he's perfect for 175. Perfect 175. Where that weight cut to 170 is kind of getting a little bit much from now. It's kind of getting a little bit much. He wants to move up to 185, but he doesn't have that kind of size, that kind of build to move up to 185. I think people are underestimating him a lot now. He beat Leon Edwards for 24 minutes of their fight. He beat Leon Edwards, like wrestled him. And before that, people were like, ooh, is he better than GSP? Pound for pound number one. And then after that fight, he lost Leon Edwards again in a fight that, you know, was a close-ish decision. I'm not going to say that it was the closest decision ever. I had it for Leon Edwards, and Leon Edwards also had a point taken away from him. But I think, the, you know, people are starting to disrespect him a little bit too much. Took that Hamza Chimaev fight on short notice against one of the baddest men in the UFC going up a weight division and put up a really good fight. Some people thought that he won that fight. And I think that people are starting to disrespect him. I think people are starting to forget who Kamaru Usman is. He's getting that bit older and his knees aren't the same that they used to be. Understandable. Yeah, that's an understandable point to make. But for people to not put him in a conversation at 175 pounds, for people to not, you know, give him the respect that he deserves at 185, I think that is crazy. Crazy to do considering how good Kamaru Usman is. After that, we have the man that beat Kamar Usman. It's Leon Edwards. We had to talk about the champion at 170 and 175 pounds too. Leon, all of you guys know how big of a fan I am of Leon Edwards. How I think that he's underrated and disrespected as a UFC champion. I think that, you know, in terms of pound for pound numbers, he should be ahead of John Jones right now, pound for pound. And that's just because, you know, John Jones right now probably shouldn't be as high as he's on the pound for pound list, even though I think he gets way too much hate. I'll probably make a video about that soon about how much hate John Jones gets recently. Because I think that people are starting to forget as we have this influx of new fans into the UFC, which is great, don't get me wrong. People are starting to forget who John Jones is and what John Jones has done inside the UFC. But Leon Edwards, I think he's a phenomenal fighter. Pound for pound number two for me right now. And I think that he dominates a lot of these guys at 175. When I talked about Usman, Leon Edwards has obviously beat him. But it could be a different fight at 175. Those extra five pounds make a hell of a difference if you're cutting those five pounds. You can be a little bit bigger coming in. You don't have to, you know, worry about that weight cut as much if you're Kamara Usman. When you look at Hamza Chamayev, some people are already picking Hamza Chamayev to beat Leon Edwards at 170. I think Leon gives some problems. I think Leon gives some problems because Leon has great submission defense, a great gas tank, and an elite, elite kickboxer and an elite striker. And I think that Leon Edwards is one of the most well-rounded champions inside the UFC. Now, it would be a great fight. I would love to watch Hamzat against Leon Edwards. And I think Leon Edwards takes it. I think he's the guy that I'm picking to be my champion at 175. And then finally, for 175, we have Jack Della Maddalena. Without talking about one of the rising stars at 175. Just beat Gilbert Burns in the rankings now. 
called out Shavkat Rachmanov's name. There's not a whole lot of people in the world, in the UFC, anywhere, any weight division. There's not a whole lot of heavyweights that would call Shavkat Rachmanov's name. So JDM got a lot of balls for doing that. And the thing about walk around weight with him is that he walks around about 189. I'm pretty sure he fought UFC 284, if I'm getting the numbers right, where they released his in octagon numbers. And I think he was at 189 when he's inside the octagon. And I don't think that's bad. I think that's a 14 pound weight cut and he can put on that little bit more muscle. And we've seen, holy God, can this guy box? Holy shit, can JDM box? Coming from a guy that, you know, I've boxed a little bit in my time. I kind of, you know, can pick out a good boxer when I see them inside the UFC. JDM's got clean striking, really, really clean. You can see that, you know, his defensive movements are really good too. In the pocket, outside the pocket, got a good jab. He can do pretty much everything in terms of boxing. And I think he gives everybody on this list problems. I know the guy that's kind of like a rising contender. That's the 165, 175 pound champions and who I think could be champions in those. Let me know who you guys think could be champs in 165, 175. And I'll catch all you boys tomorrow. Peace.